All right, uh, we are at the top of the hour, two o'clock, so I think we will go ahead and get started. Welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, John, just checking with you from a logistics perspective, everybody getting admitted and we're ready to go? Yep, we're, um, no one's waiting at the moment. Very good. Well, again, welcome everyone, and it is my pleasure to briefly introduce you to the section of, of uh, our afternoon um, Galileo conference, reaching out, reaching in, a little Neil Diamond reference just came to mind when I was thinking about putting this together with Danita. Uh, Danita and I had some shared experiences over the last uh, two years, really working to provide training for K-12 media specialists and teachers during uh, our uh, very hectic and very confusing and disoriented pandemic times. And we just wanted to get together uh, and do a presentation and share a little bit about what we learned, uh, how we approached this, and uh, some of the good things that we learned from our colleagues uh, along the way. Um, and Danita, if it's okay, I will introduce you just in the interest of, uh, of, uh, of getting us going. Uh, and feel free to follow up with anything more you have to say about yourself, Danita. But uh, Danita has uh, joined um, the uh, Galileo uh, Governance Group, our uh, Galileo Steering Committee over the last uh, two years, I believe, and that was the first work that Danita and I did together, was really working uh, together during those meetings. But then we really quickly began to discover that we had, um, we were doing a lot of serendipitous activities related to working with our media specialists and offering training. And Anita invited me to do a lot of sessions. She was in on a lot of the work that we were doing uh, during the Galileo redesign and the training that we offered after that. Anita attended uh, several sessions and gave me good advice and feedback. And she's just been so valuable to us also uh, as a conduit for outreach to the K-12 community. So thank you, Anita, for being you and for being here. And it's just been so great working with you. Uh, and I'm Russell Palmer. I'm the Assistant Director for uh, Support Services here at uh, Galileo. And along with that, I also do a lot of um, training and outreach, although not nearly as much as I would like to do, um, because I also manage uh, our support team uh, and keep things running and keep our development going and other things around here uh, with a team of um, uh, of the Galileo staff and the Galileo support staff. Our agenda, uh, what we wanted to bring to the table for you all uh, is just to talk about the Galileo redesign and training needs, and I'll begin with that. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about the specific uh, needs that we identified for media specialists and the training needs during the pandemic. Uh, and that was really interesting, and connecting that back to this morning's keynote conversation for those of you that are here, uh, Danita, I think you would agree that so much opportunity came our way with this to learn new things uh, and to really dig into the needs because everybody wanted more professional development during this time. It was something that we could all do and do virtually, and it was a way for us to stay together and communicate with one another. Uh, we all learned a lot about collaboration during this time about raising awareness and marketing. Um, we all encountered some challenges with what we were working on. Uh, we're gonna share some of our takeaways and some tips and tricks that we learned uh, in the training environment as we go through. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And before we get going, uh, Danita, if you have anything else to share as we get uh, into this, I welcome you to introduce yourself and uh, what your thoughts are on, on what we're talking about today. Okay, thanks, Russell. Um, I am Donita Hinckley, and I work for the Georgia Department of Education. And my current role is library media and resource uh, specialist. It has just changed, so I'm still getting used to saying that. I have been a trainer for the Georgia Department of Education for seven years, and just in the last year, or so have taken on the role of working with media specialists and it keeps kind of morphing and I'm now able to spend more time working with media specialists and digital resources so Galileo is a perfect fit with that. Um, yes, it's been good to work with Russell we've worked together to do some different training sessions and provide support and so we're going to talk about some of those things during this session. Um, if you have a question at any point feel free to type it in the chat or. Um, at any time and we'll just answer those questions as they come up. It's yours, Russell. 
Russell is consistently pained as we all are. And this comes up later on to find his mute button. <laughs> it, it was hiding from me, Danita. Uh, so let's launch in uh, with what we're talking about here. So in, in spring 2020, uh, things were happening so fast. We were really committed at that point here at Galileo to the Galileo redesign. Uh, we were we had long been planning and working toward a release uh, for July of 2020. Uh, and we were moving very quickly on that. Um, in March, obviously, we had the onset of, of COVID-19, and, and we were looking at lockdown. I came back from Texas uh, during the Electronic Resources and Libraries Conference, and then I didn't leave the house again for quite some time after that. So it was sort of uh, surreal. Um, so we, we all had that, that lockdown. Uh, there was a massive change, not only in K-12, but also in higher education to pivot to online delivery, where that, whether that online delivery was um, for K-5 students. My daughter is a K-5 student, and they shifted to uh, online delivery. Uh, one of the funniest conversations I heard between my wife and daughter during COVID was my daughter announced to my wife that you're the worst teacher ever. And my wife responded, well, you're the worst student ever. So we were all at home making a lot of adjustments to that part of our lives as well. So we all needed to learn fast. And then I think another really important thing about all this is we really needed to be able to stay connected. And I think a lot of ways uh, following uh, all of this, we became more connected. Um, I certainly have uh, been much um, closer and, and collabor more collaborative with Anita since uh, we worked together on all that we did with, with things. So we very successfully, uh, thanks to our development team and others that we were working with, uh, we uh, released the Galileo portal uh, redesign. And we're, uh, again, we're looking at doing a new portal redesign uh, update uh, this July, um, uh, July 19th, for those of you who might not have been in this morning session. We'll be releasing some new search features and functionality. But we really knew that we were changing a lot about Galileo, and it hadn't undergone any significant redesign since around 2014. So it was going to be really important to get out in front of that as much usability and accessibility as we had designed into the systems. It's a complex system. We knew that we were going to have to offer good quality training on that. Uh, so again, uh, this is a massive in scope uh, redesign, a total rebuild. Uh, had a huge impact on how students, teachers, and media specialists would be using the site. So yeah, obviously training required. So as I begin to look at this, uh, one of the most important things, I think anytime you're looking at having to deliver training, uh, and uh, my staff now, I've been working very closely with Mike White lately on training plans. I think training plans and training goals are so very important. So we worked very closely. If anybody ever would like to see a copy of uh, Galileo training plans, like Danita, my background, I was at Solonet and Lyricis for more than 10 years where my primary role and even my secondary role was in training. So I love the right training plans and the right training. And so I think a training plan is so cornerstone to getting started with things. So we wrote, wrote training plans both for uh, our admin training and for our front-facing training. And beginning of that release in July, my goal was to reach as many K-12 media specialists and teachers as possible. We needed to get those users, um, those, those librarians, those school librarians, and those teachers comfortable with new features, new navigation, um, the fact that they could use a, you know, the database and uh, spotlight research resources. We had new ways of listing our databases, new ways of accessing support. And we had uh, all these new tools uh, and training uh, opportunities that we created. So we need to make sure that people could find those things on the site. Intuitive though they may be, it's good to point people in the right direction. So uh, Danita, I I'll go ahead and say, going to the marketing and outreach side of this was absolutely instrumental with this. We were able to have a, a very successful training program. Uh, we'll see some statistics later on, but by working with Danita to kind of drum up uh, people's knowledge of the redesign uh, to reach out through the channels that she has 
uh, at DOE to really drive teachers and media specialists to this training. You know, we had some initial training early in the summer before school really started back and we drew some people in, but we were tripling our numbers once Danita got on the case and was able to work on the outreach side of this for us. So that's just a little bit of background on what we did on the Galileo side. Uh, you know, and, and Danita was involved uh, very early on with that, attended the training, and uh, certainly gave me good feedback to continue to shape that training as well. So Danita, go ahead. Okay, so kind of what we did, um, and Russell talked about the training plan, and I, sitting here, I was thinking, you know, with pandemic, it was fly by the seat of your pants almost because training plans kind of went out the door. We had to adjust just like all of y'all did in your libraries and your school libraries, your public libraries, your university libraries. You had to just, you know, take that next step and go day by day, hour by hour and adjust. So I started looking at what were the needs of the heart of the school. And I consider the library media center the heart of a school. And these were just some of the things they needed networking, they needed support, training, collaboration, conversation, just new ideas, professional learning, all those different things were all needs. And those were needs in regular times. And then with pandemic, they just became magnified. Um, and then having the new uh, features in redesign of Galileo just required a lot more training than maybe we would have normally had. Um, next slide, Russell. So um, this is Russell, but I'm going to say the timing is so important. Timing is so important because even not just time of year where Russell's going to talk about how summer's tough, but the time of day what time do you offer training? Because different people have different responsibilities in their different locations. All right, Russell, it's yours. That's very true, Danita. And going back to the whole concept of the training plan, I was very fortunate to have already written a detailed training plan that folded it nicely into what we were working on already. What I had to stop and do, and this, this is great, I'm glad you mentioned this, as Galileo was charged, we coordinated with, with Danita and uh, actually the DOE representative to Galileo Steering Committee at the time that spring immediately asked us even before the pandemic hit full on, can you design resource pages? Can you create resources so that, you know, absent the portal uh, and quickly we can have handouts and information ready to go uh, for our teachers. So uh, we did this both, well, we did this for the DOE, but we also did it for our public libraries. Uh, and we thought it was such a good idea that it had been voiced by DOE that we also went ahead and did it for our academic and li libraries as well. So we had we created these guides, uh, including a print guide that uh, Joy, who was here earlier, um, that many of you have met, uh, our marketing person, uh, Joy turned that guide into a, um, a printable handout as well for parents. So we, were, we shifted gears a little bit and, and, and still worked to stay on schedule. Uh, with the, the redesign during all this. But as was mentioned, timing timing was challenging because I really wanted to get the message out about the redesign over the summer as much as we could. And Danita helped with that by, I think, keeping people up to date on what we were doing by email and, and, and by the reporting she does through her role in, in Galileo Steering Committee. So that, that helped a little bit. But yeah, our training was going to be low with K-12 in the summer, and we knew that. Uh, but we still try to do try to do all the outreach that we could. We also have K-12 representatives on our Galileo Development Advisory Committee. And you know, I asked them about timing. And I know it's challenging for everyone in the K-12 environment. Um, some of you will have very morning heavy days. Some of you have very afternoon heavy days. Some of you, uh, I, I talk with a lot of teachers who have um, after school duty that uh, requires them, it prevents them from being able to attend a session in the afternoon. But overall, uh, looking at things, I heard from uh, a lot of teachers and, and media specialists that, you know, late afternoon, that two to five o'clock slot was sort of the best timing uh, in terms of the time of day. 
uh, and uh, you know worked to really offer as many K-12 sessions in the afternoon. I also added sessions to be able to really make sure that we uh, got people in those seats and were able to teach people about it. And then we also, and I think this was a good takeaway from this, we were also able to offer those recordings to everyone. So a lot of people would register and we're going to do the same thing this time. You know, I we moved away from doing things like certificates. If somebody really wants me to do a certificate that they attended a training session, I can. Uh, but what's better is, if, you know, if someone just attends after the fact and they look at that recording, you know, that's that's great. Uh, I don't try to prove that. <laughs> I tend to work on the honor system with that if, if, if there's certification uh, involved because, you know, it's getting it out there, getting people registered and getting people the content is key. Um, and then looking at online meeting for formats, uh, we were just transitioning to Microsoft Teams from ugh, Skype for Business, which was even more uh, of an awful program. So sometimes we're very prescribed in what technology we can use for training. We have to learn to meet the most of that. Uh, and uh, Teams has evolved as, as, uh, um, as the dean knows, she's been using Teams for a lot of her training as well. Uh, but it's, it, it definitely has its challenges. And, uh, you know, I worked to, to find some consistency and some consistent settings that worked for me in that training environment within Teams so that I could uh, set things forth. I did things like making sure that uh, I admitted all registered users so that I didn't have to do the admit thing every time uh, with registered people. So uh, looking at things like that. And again, outreach. Uh, Danita was so pivotal uh, and such a great uh, point of outreach for us, uh, just using uh, DOE prescribed listservs and other places where I just don't have the access to um, submit. I could write up an email and Danita could get it out and I would see registration numbers go up almost immediately. Also, Danita is very trusted by her colleagues uh, in the uh, school library media environment. And I think that really helps. So thank you, Danita, for being that trusted <laughs> uh, uh, member of their community. I mentioned some of the challenges of online training, and uh, uh, Dania, Dania, we can brainstorm and spitball a little bit, a bit on this because we've all been through it. Uh, but uh, this is this is fun because we're in, uh, and also very meta because we're in an online conference right now, <laughs> dealing with some of these same issues. Uh, again, you know, my mute button, button hides from me, and where did it go? And it took me a second to get to it sometimes. But I'll let you expand on what your experiences were here, Dania. Well, since you've mentioned that you're muted. Um, the training team that I was a part of before uh, moving into this new position, uh, we decided that we should all put a jar on our desk. And every time somebody said, you're muted, or I can't hear you, or can you hear me, that we had to put a nickel in the jar and we would all be able to retire within a year after all these online meetings that we were doing. Um, so that's definitely a challenge, getting used to that. Um, like. Galileo, the Department of Education uses Teams, and we were just beginning to use Teams. We had used GoTo, so GoTo um, webinar, GoTo meeting, and so we were transitioning also. So learning a new platform and getting used to it, um, and where the controls are, where the mute button is, that kind of stuff, um, bandwidth issues. I live in rural South Georgia. And I live in a city, but you know, sometimes our internet's not the best. And so um, you always come up with your alternatives. If my internet goes out, I have these three people I can call and say, is internet on at your house and jump in my car and go. Um, I did have to go to my mother's house for a, a couple of different meetings uh, because her internet was working, mine wasn't. Uh, just other technology issues with computers and things and with people working from home. Um, we didn't have easy access to those tech support people, you know, hands on, we could talk to them over the phone and they could help us troubleshoot. But if there were issues um, it, that prevent, presented a little more of a challenge, keeping up with the chat, it's great um, that we have John here as our facilitator, because when you're training or presenting and you're really trying to interact with the audience, and then you've got that chat over there. Mine's over in this other screen. And so that's why I keep turning my head and looking. So having someone who can keep up with the chat is definitely helpful to you. Okay. Yeah, all of that is, you know, all those are issues that we've dealt with at Galileo. 
And Danita, I, I have to laugh at myself sometimes because I'm always cautious of this, but there also should be a probably a virtual meeting swear jar. Um, <laughs> you never know. Uh, and then, uh, so there's certainly that. But yeah, you mentioned the bandwidth issues uh, and, you know, it's, it, and just prescribing very clearly what the expectations are when someone enters a room in order to keep that under control is really important for us. I had the goal of producing on the other side of this clean recording. So I advise people, hey, unless you want to be on this recording uh, at the end of the meeting, please make sure when you enter the room, you turn off your video if it isn't off already. Uh, and you can also suppress video now in uh, Teams. So I know while I know the video connection is really important for us, you see I'm, I'm hiding today because I'm in my office. In my office, I can only get a side view of myself. Uh, and that knows you just don't, you don't want to. But just the same, you know, it, it's, while it's important, it sometimes can be a drag on bandwidth. And Danita mentioned the challenges of, of, of rural internet. I have good internet uh, living close to Athens, but at the same time, I had a wife and uh, working at home and a daughter doing school from home. So those challenges, you know, and, and the challenges of space were, were part of this as well. The bandwidth was uh, an issue every single day and I would get dropped from a meeting. And I think that was a learning I had too. And I've been doing training for a long time. And Danita, I'm sure this happened to you, but when you lose connection, just keeping your calm until you can get it back. Uh, people generally stay, you know, and then and reacting calmly and just letting someone know, hey, I'm, I'm doing my best to get back in. Uh, that was something that, you know, kind of I, I revisited and learned again was just kind of keeping my cool and doing the right things when uh, you lose that connection. So how it panned out, again, I mentioned I would mention some statistics uh, here. Uh, we, we offered a ton of training sessions uh, in, uh, we, over the summer, fall. We had webinars, uh, single webinars in July, August, uh, and September um, and uh, for, uh, for 395 people, which is good. And we did two, and that's, that, was, that was multiple sessions, uh, you know, three, four sessions. We did 395, we did two sessions again and uh, uh, with another round that Anita had asked me to do in January and in two sessions we drew, drew 354 people. Uh, now not all those people attended live, a good percentage of them attended live, but a lot of them uh, and, and Mary thank you for the comment on the recordings mentioned how recording the help uh, helpful the recordings are and I think that's a direction that we have to move in. We talked about timing and we want as much live participation and training and, and events as we possibly can. Uh, but it's impossible to get everyone. And I think also another thing that I've learned is that availability after the fact is really important after you provide a recording. You know, I try to make it clear if you have questions that I can help with, you know, don't hesitate to give me a call or drop me a line. You know, I'm always more than happy to help uh, with questions that you have after you view one of our recordings. So again, we were able to really increase our numbers and get people involved. Now, some of the other things that happened uh, as part of this, and this is part of what I want to get across to the K-12 uh, uh, media specialists and teachers who might be in attendance today. Uh, I was able to continue the training also with some multiple, with multiple schools and individual school systems. I did a lot of this prior to the pandemic. I went to uh, schools quite often. One of the uh, training sessions I did after uh, the Galileo trainings, I worked with the Cab County Schools. I've done an event for them a couple of years before, and uh, they had asked me, hey, it was a reminder for them that I do this, and I was continuing to do this in a virtual environment. Just because I couldn't travel didn't mean I couldn't do it. I worked with some private K-12 schools to do some Galileo training. I, that's always a good learning. Uh, so uh, the bottom line with this is, is by being out there virtually, by putting ourselves out there, both in the sessions that I did and the sessions that Anita asked me to do, I was able to create more training opportunities uh, for things. I tend to, tend to try to do things that are larger events, like a full staff development day for school media specialists so that I can reach as many people and talk with as many people as possible. But I've worked with small groups of students, um, or pardon me, small groups of uh, faculty or media specialists uh, at a school system or even at an individual school before as well. There's a lot of value in that um, also. Uh, and we developed short webinars for, for Danita's events. And this was a huge learning for me because I am long-winded. Those of you who know me know that I am. 
But Danita reined me in. She's like, I want you to come. And, I, and I, I, I'll admit, Danita, I was like, why don't you want me to just do 15 minutes? I, I've got so much to share. There's so much about Galileo. Well, what I learned from this, and this was a great learning for me, Danita, is that in 15 minutes, that 15 minutes of just letting people know I'm available, uh, I'm here, and here's some of the things that we're working on, um, I would get so much follow-up via email um, that would be great opportunities. Uh, and then I did a session on eBooks that led to a couple of more sessions and a session uh, for, uh, for a, a very good um, uh, RISA conference uh, that I did on eBooks. And I've actually done that eBooks uh, session again with the public libraries for Wendy. Uh, so it, it, it's interesting how you create these small opportunities to talk about something briefly can turn into something really, really valuable. Uh, and I was so impressed by that. So thank you, Danita, for, for reining me in, getting me to think, think smaller uh, in terms of outreach. And also, I think that also ties to the value we were talking about earlier, time and timing. Uh, you know, sometimes if I can take 15 minutes and know who to talk to uh, the next time I have a question, that's so important for, for everyone. But just some tips, tricks, and takeaways for me. Collaboration is just, I think, so important. Uh, Danita and I, I've, I've learned so much working with you, uh, 15 minute sessions and more. Another thing is we are all challenged for time. I, you know, I mentioned doing those smaller sessions. While I prefer to do sessions for larger groups, doing smaller sessions at schools, it's great, it has a great value. And I try to do that if I can at all, because I get a lot of value out, out of that in terms of feedback from uh, the community as well. Uh, brief is often better. Uh, short sessions create opportunities for extended interaction. Uh, some of the things that we did after these short sessions I had mentioned, someone had asked me a question about Follett Destiny integrations. And for those of you who have Follett Destiny and you haven't you've done an integration already, you can integrate Galileo resources into your Follett uh, Destiny catalog. Um, minimally, you, uh, minimally, you can integrate EBSCO resources and um, uh, Britannica resources and have them discoverable in your library catalog if you have Follett Destiny. And this was a, when I did a session and it was a reminder for Henry County Schools and we had started that work in the past and didn't get it done and we were able to get it done this year. So it was really neat to sort of see that. Uh, another thing is the Galileo Local Resource Integration. If you don't know at the school system level, you can put your resources into Galileo and we can make them searchable in the Galileo search. Uh, and uh, Mike White on my team uh, works uh, with Galileo Local Resource Integration. We call it GLRI for short. Uh, so if you're interested in, in using Galileo Admin, let us know and we can help you work with that to put your local resources in. And then we really were, I think, very successful at promoting Galileo ebook collections. I think um, this expands. I've heard such good feedback from RISA events that uh, doing uh, the Galileo ebooks are so much of an expansion uh, for, for the ebook collections that you all have locally and they're valuable to you all. And I'm always so glad to hear that. But it's always great to reach, out, reach more people with uh, those collections and make them aware of them and how they work and how they can be used. Go ahead, Anita. Okay, um, so these are more um, planning and executing your event, your training session tips and tricks. Decide if registration is necessary or if you want to simply share the meeting link. So um, with using Microsoft Teams up until just in the last few weeks, there was not an easy way to do registration. So I would have to set up a Microsoft form, set up a, a specific email template for it to send a response after you registered for the session that said, you know, thank you for registering, you're registered for this particular session. Um, there was a lot of behind the scenes work and Microsoft Teams has just come out with um, webinars which will include registration. So I'm eager to get started with that uh, because I think that will make that process much easier. But sometimes registration may not be necessary. You may want to just share a meeting link out. Um, so that's one thing to think about, um, the value versus the time required. Sometimes um, you have to do that balancing act and decide. I mentioned this earlier, use a facilitator if possible. Again, that's what John is doing for us. And that's awesome to have someone 
who can admit people in um, if you have that waiting room enabled, monitor the chat, handle any tech issues. At the beginning, all of us were pretty much getting used to using online meetings, uh, whether it was Zoom or Teams or Google Meet, um, go to any of those. Most of us had not used them. And so people would join the meeting, but wouldn't be able to hear or would join the meeting and um, weren't seeing the slides advance, those kinds of things. And having a facilitator who can handle those kinds of issues while you continue on with your presentation, your training uh, definitely helps. Shut down other applications on your computer. I have found that my Outlook uses a lot of bandwidth. So when I'm in a meeting, I generally shut down my Outlook uh, just to preserve that bandwidth. And so think about if you're like me, you like to have about 20 different things open and you know 20 different tabs in each browser that you have open, you may need to close some of that just to make things run a little more smoothly. Turn off cameras. Uh, Russell talked about that earlier. Um, if bandwidth is an issue, turning off your cameras, it also does help with the recordings. So when you're doing a recording of a session, then having more of a clean recording without the videos. Start with an icebreaker if there's time. Um, I like to do icebreakers. One of my big things in my training sessions and my meetings is connections and collaborations and getting people to know one another. And so I like to start with an icebreaker if there is time. Doing something as simple as, you know, doing a little poll, um, doing a would you rather type game, those kinds of things. Um, and then making it interactive. So again, using polls, doing those kinds of things. I've used Padlets before. So just to keep um, people interested, sometimes giving them something to do will help uh, make your training session go a little more smoothly or your meeting. Yeah, and just a comment on two of these things, Danita. Uh, the signing of registration is necessary. I did registration for all of the sessions. The only tip I have on when you do your registration uh, is I waited until the day before, before I shared the link. And I found that was a lot more, uh, uh, lot easier for me to do it all at once the day before. Uh, and it also uh, made it easier for people to find it. If you send it sort of right after they register, then people tend to, to lose it in their email quite frankly. The other thing you may have discovered too with this, Danita, one, one thing I discovered is with, with registrations, I would get, I also did it the day before because I would get a fair number of bounced emails uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and I would do my best to uh, try and get the message to those people, whether it was by calling them or reaching out to them in some way. But that's another sort of behind the scenes things that happened for me uh, with managing registration. Um, and then just want to comment on your icebreakers. Uh, your icebreakers were so good. I remember the, you did one on uh, um, what people's preferred literary genre was. And that was so interesting to see with a large group of school librarians, how many, how, how varied it was. Uh, there, there was the, the distribution was pretty equal in, in terms of who liked what. So it was sort of fun to see that. Well, thanks. So as we mentioned, uh, this is, I think, Danita's too. Uh, so, um, the I'll let you go ahead, Danita. <laughs> well, you just chime in, but we've sure, said sure. this. We've said this over and over. Collaboration is key. Working with others, um, being able to do these trainings, and um, reaching as many people as possible. It's only possible if we work together. So, collaborating with any partners that you can. Utilizing the expertise that's available. You don't have to know it all. When I took on the role of working with school library media specialists, I thought, oh no, I've got to know this and this and this and this. And then I said, oh, wait a minute. I don't have to know everything about Galileo because Russell does and I can call on Russell. Um, so utilize that, take advantage of those um, people that you know. People are eager to learn new things or better ways to do something. Um, and I think that's evidenced by those uh, statistics that Russell shared, just the numbers of people who participated in sessions or went and watched recordings afterwards, because 
everybody wants to better themselves and do the best job they can and get as much information as possible. Sometimes the conversation can be more important than the instruction. And what I mean by that is making those connections with people. Um, Russell said that he sometimes would pick up the phone and call somebody because their email didn't go through. Well, having that conversation made a connection for that individual with Russell and with Galileo. And so now that person will feel more comfortable contacting Russell if they have a question or someone else at Galileo because they have made that personal connection. So I think that's important. And then it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, before the meeting actually started, uh, Joy was on here, Joy Woodson, and, and we were talking about how we want things to go as well as possible, and they do, but they don't have to be perfect, and people understand that, um, and so, you know, just kind of take away that, that stress that you put on yourself to make it perfect, and just know that you're doing the best you can, and offering people as as much info as you can. Yeah, and that's uh, that's absolutely a takeaway for for today too. Is the behind it's fun to look at behind the scenes. Benita and I have both been super super busy all summer, and we haven't had a lot of time. We we're not saying we didn't take time to prepare this and work together, uh, but it ain't been easy <laughs> to find that time. We've had two short meetings, uh, so uh, but hopefully my point with that is you learned something uh, from this, and it, while it wasn't perfect. Um, we uh, shared a lot with you. So um, we're, we're glad you attended and hope you got something from. And then um, these next slides, I'm just going to uh, talk about a few things that are available. Um, and if you do have questions, please type those into the chat. And um, I'm just going to do a couple slides and then we can address anything y'all have. We have something for uh, Georgia public educators, um, higher education. Faculty can also participate in this. It's called Godot Community. So Godot Community is um, a closed social media site where you can communicate and network and collaborate with other Georgia educators. Um, you must, when you sign up, you'll just click that link when you have access to the um, PowerPoint. When you sign up, you'll create an account. You must use your school district your university um, whatever your organization is you must use that email address do not use a gmail address a hotmail anything like that um, we will delete those and we are using godot community for our library media group as the main form of communication there are discussion boards in there and we're posting all kinds of information out there and information about upcoming meetings things like that the DOE Media Listserv, we're kind of transitioning away from that. We're sending a weekly or bi-weekly digest to the Media Listserv saying, hey, here's what happened in community. Go check it out, uh, just to remind people community is there. So uh, I encourage all of you to apply to join that. Um, next slide, please. And I also wanted to let you know that our library media services webpage is linked here. So when you have this presentation on this webpage, we do post the recordings of any sessions that we do um, or links to ones that partners have done for us. We also provide a lot of uh, other information here. So please know that that is out there and available to you. And then there is a summer literacy conference and we are excited to uh, present this at the end of July. It is a virtual conference. It is free. And we encourage educators to join um, in this and attend whatever sessions you can. Um, I know that there is at least one person here on our session today who is presenting at that summer literacy conference. So. You're going to have library media specialists presenting, teachers, authors are going to be presenting, just literacy experts. Um, it is geared to birth to grade 12, but we feel like there are probably some sessions that um, 
public library and higher education faculty would also benefit from. So please um, sign up for that. If you have questions about it, you can certainly contact me and I can give you more info. And then that is my contact info. So that's what I have, Russell. I just wanted to say thank you so much, uh, Danita, and uh, we welcome any questions. I'm just reading in the comments in the chat, um, and forgive me, Heather, for missing the context, uh, but you commented that uh, Kahoot works well also. I don't know if that was for... And, uh, Russell, that uh, came in the context of talking about interactive games during uh, ah, ah, yes, presentations. Yes. Okay. I'll have to take a look at that. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, it was interesting today. Uh, I, I, uh, Danita mentioned polls. I love doing, and I haven't, you know, I haven't done it in a while. I don't do all that much training, but doing this quick online polls is just so, so much fun for people, and it gets a, a great way to get people started too. Uh, but yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. Yeah, and there are so many different options out there now that. You know, you could use Kahoot, you could use Padlet to do something, you could use Mentimeter, you can use Microsoft polls if you're a Teams person. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of different options. And my mm -hmm. advice on that is find one or two that you really like and become proficient in and just stick with those. <laughs> because yeah. if you try to learn too many tools, it doesn't really happen. Um, That's true. I, I, I agree with that. And it's interesting. I really enjoyed the, I don't know how many of you were in the presentation this morning from the uh, Open Athens and Gideon folks where they were talking about web design tools, but I love the their polls. Uh, mm -hmm. I, just the point about their polls, one of them was really great because it generated so much conversation around the difference of designing for librarians versus designing for uh, library users. It's just they're completely different things. Um, and, and, and finding that balance is hard. We've got a comment, Danita and Russell, thank you so much for the Galileo Info virtual media specialist meeting as I got some of the info to, for my presentation uh, in this conference from the usage data you showed and how to locate. Oh, that's awesome. Y'all are really providing value. Hey. That's good to know. Thank you for that, uh, Christy. Yeah, and that's one thing, you know, that's another you know, thing I, I, I may have mentioned just because there was a question. And I think in those 15 minute interactions, and, and I don't know if this is how it happened organically, but I have been asked just, hey, where are statistics for Galileo? And we provide that very robust um, statistics tool uh, on the Galileo About uh, page uh, that you can access and use and you can data mine all day in there. And, and yes, I'm glad it's providing value for, for your presentation because I think that's uh, it's so nice when people use that and give us that feedback. And Ken Hensley from my team is the expert there. That's the other thing is, is I've, Ken and I are presenting tomorrow about open Athens statistics, but uh, to Danita's point too, is getting the right person with the right expertise to talk about uh, these things is really important. And Ken can talk to you all day about how those statistics are compiled and aggregated. So, yep, it's always good to, to get that feedback. Any other questions coming through, John, or? No, just a um, you know several thank yous. Um, also, there was an early, a comment early on. Um, Mary just mentioned how useful the recordings are. Um, if I don't know if you had anything else to say about managing recordings. Uh, you know, just that's just as far as managing recordings, you know, that's something that takes me about a day to bring together because I want to edit them and make sure that they're nice and clean and that, you know, I'll usually start a recording a couple of minutes before we actually start the session and just making sure it's tight and neat and, um, and uh, useful uh, and starts at the appropriate time. If you have like three minutes of lead in on a recording, it can be confusing. So my advice there is to make sure that you clean them up before you send them out. And uh, also taking down old recordings, that's probably something I need to follow my own advice on. Um, and, but I'm, I'm sure that I will be taking down uh, old training sessions from last year as I'm about to generate a whole bunch of new ones in the, on the Galileo training pages. So, um, but yeah, you can cause confusion with old uh, old recordings. So it's good to kind of, take those down and, and replace them when you can. And we're doing that with video recordings too. Ken Hensley is also sort of our resident video expert. And he's going to be updating all of our video uh, tutorials as we go into the second phase of the redesign. Yeah, that's a good point about cleaning up your videos. Um, and it does take time. It's not a, a quick, easy process of just, oh, let me just come in here and snip this part, snip this. Mm -hmm. and you know, so um, 
have patience with us people <laughs> as we yeah. you know we won't have the recording up immediately after the meeting like russell said sometimes a day or so in order to get yeah. it cleaned up and and ready to put but um that definitely i think has provided value during the pandemic is mm -hmm. having those recordings available because you know and and even if someone attended in person sometimes having that recording yes. to go back and listen to a section again to refresh or to work through it and be able to stop mm -hmm. it and try it on their own computer and everything uh, sometimes is a great benefit of the recording and my other sort of uh, captain obvious tip on recordings is um I, and if this is all configured it's all about how things are configured i struggle to share the recordings via um the Microsoft environment. So I wound up downloading and reloading them all into the Galileo YouTube channel because it's just much easier and much more accessible and much more findable for people to put it there. So I much prefer to put it in that very commonly used environment than to keep it in the closed uh, Microsoft environment. Yes, Microsoft Stream, um, we also have to download ours and then upload them, even if we're going to share them because of Mm -hmm. the Godot being a closed environment, we have to upload them again and share. So it, it's a process. Yeah. Well, that is everything from us. John, if there are any other questions, we're happy to answer. But I, again, I want to thank you so much, Danita, and thank you all for attending. Uh, and if you have any questions, you know where to find Danita and I. We're happy to work with you anytime. Yes. Thanks, everybody, for attending. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. And have a great rest of the conference. Absolutely.